Are you looking for a fun, colorful sewing project that you can customize just about any way you like? Well, you might fall in love with sewing braids. I know I have, so stick around and in this video I'll show you how you can make these. Hi and welcome to my channel. This is my handmade lifestyle. I'm Patty and I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. I like simple projects. I like things that I can put together and make and feel like I've completed something in a day or two. My uh, time that I have for crafting is limited and so when I do have that treasured moment that I can work on something, I want to feel like I'm getting something done. Recently I made this bag. I love this bag. I used a free pattern that's on Blueprint. They also have a really fast moving <laughs> video on how to put it together. Uh, but the big takeaway for me was sewing this quilting pattern that's called a braid. This is my new favorite thing. I love this. I want to sew them all the time. It's such a fun way to customize uh, bags. You could do your own quilt. Uh, any kind of housewares, you can put the braid pattern on it. Uh, it's super fun. It's like you're you're making your own fabric, which is something I love about jelly rolls. So uh, I made this from a uh, jelly roll, and the braid that I just shared with you in the opening is from a jelly roll. Essentially, what you're going to do is take your jelly roll strips and then cut them down to size, and um, then you, you stitch them together. So I went with uh, six inch strips for this video because, because I have the six inch quilting roller and it was just like easier for me to segment my strips using <laughs> this, you know, fixed distance on the roller and I could see everything I was doing. I love these. If you haven't gotten any of these rollers, I really recommend it, especially if you think you want to do any of these like small projects like bag making, pillows, things that require a square or triangular cuts. Using <laughs> quilting uh, tools is the only way to go. So I cut my jelly roll strips down to six inch strips and then I took several and I made uh, squares and these are two and a half by two and a half. And I have quite a few of these left. So I'm going to do uh, another little bag project. When you stitch your pieces together, and you trim them down, you're going to wind up with a unit like this. And you can make these however you want to. But this is how the, the six inch uh, strips will cut down. So they are much smaller when you're finished than you would initially think. Um, I did 13 uh, pieces that I stitched together. And um, each strip is six inches wide, so it, it cuts down quite a bit. You would be uh, really surprised at how much smaller it is, and you'll see that when we get into the instructional part of the video. Something I find uh, super fun and freeing about working with braids is the fact that uh, they don't have to match up <laughs> on the seam here. That's okay. They, they, they don't have to be perfect. Okay, I have rambled on quite enough about this project, uh, so let's now just jump into the, the actual tutorial part of it. And uh, I'll show you how I set them up and how I sew them. So, okay, enjoy. I've got all my strips pressed out, they're nice and flat, and so now what I'm going to do is even them up and we will put them on the cutting board and cut them into uh, six inch lengths. Okay, I wanna show you how I assemble those braids. And you can see I've got all my strips cut. When you lay out the braid, uh, for this particular pattern that we're doing, we need 13 of them. And you start by placing your first piece here, and then you put the second piece in at an angle. 
and then you're going to select what you want to go next and then you're going to pick uh, the next one I've moved the braid to the side of my sewing machine so it's just over here to the left of my machine and the reason I've done that is because it makes it easier for me to assemble this as you'll see when we start sewing here in just a minute. I also want to add that um, I watched a couple of videos on putting these together and something that I saw on another video was that they recommended doing a square at the bottom. And this makes so much sense because if you don't do the square, when you get a trim, you have to trim all the way up here. When you have the square, now you can come all the way down here. So you get more of your bottom print into the uh, finished uh, braid when you cut it down. And this makes so much more sense to me. <laughs> so I started making them with the square in the bottom. And there is everything laid out. So now we're actually ready to sew. And uh, I'll show you how we set that up. We've got our braid all laid out. We know how we want our pieces to go together. And so we're gonna assemble from the bottom to the top. So the first thing we do is we take the piece on the left with the square, and you're just gonna line those up. Just like that. And uh, you wanna do a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've got mine set up so that it just runs with the edge of my presser foot. And I'm just using my all purpose foot. And we're gonna sew that together. It's a lot of thread tails, so I keep my thread snips right here and I snip as I go so I don't have a big mess at the end. And I just throw them all on the floor and vacuum later. So there's your first braid, or your first, your first part of your braid. Then you're gonna take that next piece and you lay it right sides together and we're going to put it right on the machine. and then you open it and finger press it open and you can see you've got this really pretty start to your braid. Okay, and then you just take the next one and you're just working left to right all the way up and right sides together. And uh, you really wanna make sure that your seams are all going the same way. That's really important. You want all your seams to be pointing the same way. Uh, so just make sure that they are laying flat when you put it on the machine and make sure that you're stitching them down the way that all of the other seams are going. regular quilting, uh, they do what they call assembly line sewing, and I don't really know how you would do that with this particular pattern. So I'm just sewing it the way it worked for me. And you can see, we just finger press it and open it up. And then we'll take the piece on the right, and this is what you're gonna do all the way up. Now, um, when you start building the braid, it gets bigger and bigger, and I really want to make sure those seams are going the way that I want. So I'm going to wind up uh, stitching on basically the wrong side for this one because I want to make sure that I stitch the seam down the way 
I want it to go. I found if I didn't do that, I would wind up at the end having um, several seams not going the way I wanted, and then I would have to seam wrap and uh, restitch to get everything the way I wanted it, to get everything laying flat. And just, you know, as you sew, just finger press everything open and it just makes for something that really goes together nicely. And I don't worry about pinning because they're really short little pieces. So I'm just really careful about how I assemble. Just hold it carefully. If you feel like you need to pin or clip, then certainly pin or clip. I ran out of bobbin thread. Of course. Did I finish? Oh, literally. Finish out the braid. I think you get the idea. So the next one will be this. And you just build it all the way up. I hope that makes sense. But isn't that pretty? I just love them. Okay, I'm going to um, wind the bobbin. I'm going to finish sewing my braid all the way up. And um, we'll meet back and I'll show you how to press it. Now that we have that last braid assembled, I want you to see sort of the stages. The one on the left is the one that we just pulled off the sewing machine. It has not been pressed. I've just finger pressed it open. And a lot of people really like to skip the step of using the iron. Um, but I want you to notice how much smoother and flatter the one in the middle is. That's because I took a finger pressed braid and then I pressed it out on my ironing board with a hot iron and the difference is just crazy I mean it lays so much flatter it's so much nicer that is going to be uh, a much nicer piece for you to sew with because obviously this is just one part of a finished design that you're going to make and you can see on the far right that is a finished uh, pressed and trimmed braid so you can see how much smaller it is when you trim everything down so it seems just huge when you're laying out your pieces but by the time you get to the point where you trim it all down and it's ready to be uh, stitched into whatever your project is, it's a lot smaller. If you're going to do any of this little quilting type of stuff, you really do want to get, <laughs> you want to make friends with your iron. Here's the before, and here's one already trimmed. So you can see it's quite a bit of size, size difference. And I really like the difference it made using the square at the bottom. So that was a good tip, and that's why I wanted to pass that along uh, to you. I wanted to make it easier on myself because my quilt roller is six inches wide. I thought. I'm crazy not to just go ahead and use that. So here's how I set it up. I, um, you're basically, you're trimming off uh, each end and the top and the bottom. And you can only do top and bottom separately. But um, you wanna make sure that you're uh, getting all of the ends so that it's a nice um, so that it's a nice solid piece of fabric because if you're way over here you don't get a solid piece of fabric and that's going to cause you some issues and when you get to uh, put things together so make sure that you have 
on, on both sides, um, full cuts of fabric. And then what I wound up doing was I took this uh, three and I kind of lined it up with the point on the square and then I ran it straight up to the top point up here. And uh, that was where I made my cut, but I can see that I'm kind of off. So this one will have to move it over just a hair. I'm not a quilting expert, so let me just get that out of the way. We're going to line it up at three and a quarter inches. And so that's what we want to have up here. Makes a nice even line from uh, the point of this square to the point at the top. And then I've got it lined up here at the bottom. So I'm going to use my rotary cutter and hold down firmly. And these things are, they're literally a razor blade, a rolling razor blade. So you want to be so careful using them. And then we're going to flip it around to just because it's safer. So we turn it. Now we have a straight edge, so the hard work is done. You've got your first straight edge. You've got everything lined up. So line up on this side and cut straight down. So you can see why I love using a cutting mat and the quilt ruler because it just makes such a difference. And there you go. There's your trimmed braid. Isn't that beautiful? Oh gosh, it's so pretty. And that's all there is to it. I hope that demystifies the process of putting quilt braids together. It's super fun. I just highly, highly recommend them to you. And um, I expect to make projects coming up that utilize uh, this unit of construction just to make all kinds of fun things like I'm I'm seeing uh, lap quilts I'm seeing uh, placemats I'm seeing all kinds of stuff so <laughs> stay tuned for that and get yourself some jelly rolls and have a good time that's all I've got for you I really appreciate you hanging out if you made it to all the way to the end of the video I just appreciate it so much thank you and I will see you in the next video Bye-bye.